This is the Brenna 500 watt portable power station slash solar generator. Today's video is going to be an overview of this product, show off some of its features, talk about what it can and can't do, and just give a nice overview of a product not a lot of people have heard about. Hey guys, Titan Prentice, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, as I said in the intro, is an overview of this 500 watt solar generator portable power station. Now this is not a testing video that is coming next week. This is just an overview. Now let's start off with the elephant in the room. Yes, this product was sent for review. Brenda reached out to me and said, hey, we would love for you to test out our new portable power station, solar generator. We're gonna send it and a solar panel to you for free to do a review on. Let us know. And I told them, that's cool but open and honest, right? That's what I believe in here on this channel. That's what I try to do in my daily life. So this being an overview video, there's not really many pros and cons, right? But when we get into the testing, when we get into the final thoughts on this product, that's when that open and honesty is going to come into play. So for this video, we're just gonna overview it, talk about what it supposedly can do, and then in the testing videos, we're actually gonna see. So this is the Brenna 500 watt portable power station. And I hope I'm saying that name right. Because there's not very many videos of people actually reviewing their products. I don't know if it's a brand new company. I don't know if you know it's just a company that's not been to America yet. I don't know. So I don't know how to actually pronunciate the name. Let's take a look at it, All right? So on the front, you have a nice LCD display, which we will turn on by pressing this button on the left. It gives your input, your output, your amount of runtime. So how long can this power station stay on for whatever you're running? And of course, that's an estimation, not the actual proof. It does shut off after a few seconds, which is why it shut off. And then your battery percentage right now, we're on 71%. I have not charged this thing since I got it. Over here, you have three AC outputs. Supposedly, it can run a max of a thousand watts. Now, that is not output capacity, that is these, the inverter capacity. Supposedly, I'm gonna see if I got something a thousand watts to test it. Now to turn these on, your screen would be on, and you just press it, and you'll hear an audible beep. Same thing with DC, uh, USB DC's on, AC's on, I turn AC off, right? So that's one thing I do like, is it tells you all, exactly on the screen what's being charged, what's being ran. Um, a lot of them have lights, which is fine. Um, it is what it is. Me personally, I prefer the LCD screen and the audible beeps. That way I know it's physically turned on. You've got your AC input right here, which is your ways to charge it, right? So using this would charge it two ways. You've got your car charger, which it comes with, and then you have a house charger, which has some different features to it. And then using the thing right beside it, which is the input, that is your solar panel input. Right above that, you have the circuit breaker. Just like in your house, you have GFICs. Well, this one has a little circuit. So for some reason, if it's overcharging, you can just press it and it's gonna reset that circuit. Um, I believe it works with these as well. I haven't tested it out. Again, overview video. You have two USB-C chargers. One is a 100 watt fast charger and one is a 27 watt charger. So it should be able to charge up things pretty fast. I think the new MacBook Pros or the MacBooks uh, run USB-C. So being able to charge with a MacBook in like, man, you know, 30, 40 minutes would be great. It does have two regular USBs right here. They are 3.0s. Um, above here, you do have two, I call them three millimeters. Um, I don't know what the actual name for them are but they're inputs, right? I think like you can buy some little lights that plug into them. Anyway, you got a 12 volt right above it. Supposedly it is a regulated 12 volt outlet. I have no way to test it, but you do have a 12 volt outlet. Sides, you do have a fan on each side. You do have a handle up top and it's easy to pick up. It only weighs about 14 pounds, it's 13.9. So you can pick it up one handed um, carrying it, you know, 50 miles, probably not, but carrying it to the car won't be that big of a deal. On the back, you do have a little light here. So you've got low, which is one watt, two, which is two watts, 
and three, which is three watts. And then if you double tap, one, two, you do get an SOS feature. Now, let me turn that off before we all have issues. SOS for a portable power station. I don't see a point. Um, Home-based, I don't see a point, right? I'm not going to walk around the house shining SOS at people, right? Maybe I understand it from a camper. You use this in your camper and you break down on the side of the road. It would be nice to have the light and it would be nice to have the SOS feature to let people know who are coming that, hey, I need help. Um, Home-based, you lost me on that one. But the light, right, one watt's not a lot. It's enough for, you know, maybe a little bathroom light. Three watts is enough to light up a living room. Me personally, I like the ones with the lights on them, but you have to have more features than just a cool little light. And this is an area light. I've seen ones with little small, like, spotlights. You kind of lost me on that one. Now, supposedly the output is 1,000 watts, um, but then again, it's not. Somewhere in this here manual, it says output peak from the AC units is a thousand watts. Then you turn the page and it says the circuit protector right over here, the little button I showed you, will trip after 800 watts. So is it a thousand or is it an 800? Because I'm thinking, okay, this might not be great to run a fridge, a full-size fridge, but a mini fridge and possibly even a freezer, not the best in the world, but it should be able to do it because as the freezer goes up, a freezer shouldn't get above 800 watts. At least most of them shouldn't, from what I understand. Well, is it 800 or is it 1,000 watts? A little bit of confusion, which this manual has a, a few things that confuse me. So one good thing about portable power stations and solar generators is that they do have three methods of charging. The first one is the AC power. You plug it up to a wall it can charge at 200 watts per hour. DC, which is your car charger, and solar is a maximum of 120 watts. So both of those are going to be a bit slower, but it's better for it in the long run. So one interesting thing about this solar generator portable power station is that it has three modes of charging. Now I've talked about the three methods of charging, but this has three modes. So you plug it up into shore power, your house power, your home power, it's going to charge in normal mode. Now that's going to take four to five hours to recharge this device. Now you press a little button and it's going to charge it in fast mode, which is two and a half to three and a half hours. You can press that button again and it goes to silent mode, which is six hours to eight hours of charging. Now, most times when these devices are plugged up, these little fans on the side will kick up and ramp up. I've got a EcoFlow Delta right here and it sounds like a jet engine taking off when it's trying to charge. Maybe a little bit quieter, but you're standing right beside it and you think this thing's gonna blow up. So I'm assuming fast mode is trying to intake as much as it can and these fans are gonna be running. Slow mode, which is that slow silent charge, it's not going to be enough for these breakers to trip, for these fans to trip on. Let's say you have rolling blackouts, brownouts in your area, and maybe you have power for an hour, maybe you have it for two hours and you don't know when it's going to flip back off again. You can quickly plug this thing up, hit fast mode, let it do its thing for two and a half to three and a half hours and be fully charged or close to fully charged versus that silent or normal mode where you might be at 50% or 20%. So it, it's very interesting. Again, if you have plenty of time to charge, hey, silent charge it, let it run, let it do its thing overnight. But if you only have a short period of time to recharge, throw it in that fast mode. One interesting thing that this thing does have is a UPS, uninterrupted power supply. So let's say you're charging something like a computer, a security system, something that you don't want to lose power. You plug this up to the wall, and so you're getting shore power plugging it up in here and then you're running that device through your AC output, right? Now you lose shore power, right? Power outage, somebody hit a tree, whatever, right? This thing is automatically going to take over. So you shouldn't have to worry about things flickering. You shouldn't have to worry about things going off because it's automatically running from this to your device. So let's talk about auto sleep. Again, from the manual, 
it's weird because it'll say one thing and then the very next sentence it'll say something completely different. So just like the 500 watts and then 1000 watts and 800 watts, this is kind of where it gets weird. So it does have an auto shut off feature. So if I forget to turn the unit off and I've got the little AC button pressed and the screen's going to stay on, it's going to stay on for one hour. If it does not detect that any power is being used, it's going to shut off after an hour. That's great. The auto sleep timer is for one hour. If no power output within the hour, the auto sleep will activate, the unit will automatically shut off. Great. Then right below it, it says the auto sleep timer is for 12 hours. If there's no power within 12 hours, the unit will shut off. So which is it? Is it an hour? Or is it 12 hours? I don't know. Now it does talk about how you can change that setting from the one hour to up to 12 hours. So I think that's why they put it in there twice. But just know, if you have things plugged up to it and it's not getting any power out, it will shut off after an hour. So this unit does feature a LifePo 4 battery. And in terms of battery, it is like that mid-tier, upper mid-tier, right? It's not the nickel hydride fancy, fancy, fancy stuff that would probably be like $1,800 for this unit. But it's not the lead acid battery that would make this unit 50 pounds. So it's not like middle of the road. It is good for 2,000 cycles, and then you're getting about 80%. So it is that mid-tier battery. So again, you're not getting, you know, top of the line, but you're not getting the bottom of the barrel neither. It is that mid-tier. Speaking of mid-tier, let's talk about price. Again, this unit was sent for free with a solar panel. I went on their website just to see if it's worth my viewers even looking into. This unit with a solar panel is 500 bucks. A lot of units are right there around a dollar per watt hour. Some are cheaper, some are less expensive, some are more, right? You look at the four Patriots and it's like $20 per watt hour. This one is about a dollar, but you factor in you're getting a solar panel with it, a 120 watt solar panel. That by itself is what, 120, 130 bucks, depending on where you buy it from. Again, four Patriots is like $500 panel. If you minus the price of the solar panel, 350, 300 bucks, that's not terrible, right? For a 500 watt hour unit, I've bought 300 watt hour units that were $500. Again, I don't know many people that have done reviews on them, so I don't know if this is a new company or some you know fly by night company. Thus far, just talking with them, they seem pretty decent. But again, they won't good for a review, so I understand they're going to be good for me. They might be great for you guys. Who knows? So I can save you guys 6%. It's not a lot. I know 6% on your purchase if you decide to go with them using the discount code TTPC with the number 6 right behind it. It's TTPC number 6. I try to keep all my coupon codes about the same at TTPC, the Titan Preparedness Channel. So 6% that basically pays your taxes on this thing. So I will say that the box was very well protected, right? It could have taken a drop, it could have taken a fall because inside it was super padded and this was basically the only thing that came in the box, which is your two charging cords. You've got the AC charger and you've got the DC charger. So again, not a lot. So this is the solar panel that came with it. Um, it does have little kickstands, right? And it is a four panel solar panel. It does fold up nice and flat. And it does have a semi-magnetic closure right here in these grips. So a little bit of magnet, nice carrying handle, and then the power cord is on the back. Again, you've got two kickstands for optimal sunlight. So I did forget to mention that the power cord that comes with it is only about a foot and a half long. So you're not going to get very far away from the wall to charge it. But if you're charging it, you probably shouldn't have it there very far away from the wall anyway. But the power cord for the solar panel, mm, seven foot, eight foot, right? It's my arm length and then just a little bit more. Now, one thing I will say is that I love that these companies are going to these flexi panels. This is a whole lot easier to set up. It's a whole lot easier to put somewhere because it's, it's what, maybe three inches, two inches thick. And so easy carry handle, walk around with it. Go find some sun, go plug your device up. It's solar power, right? It's not going to be super fast, as fast as the wall, but it is going to 
be able to juice it up enough if you've got a bright enough day that way it can keep recharging because that unit does have pass through charging which means that if you're charging a cell phone at 20 watts and you're collecting 80 watts off of this thing it's going to pass through the device it's going to charge the battery up while also charging your devices so i do like that so while this panel is like a rubberized they say in the manual that it is not waterproof it can probably get a few drops of water on it and do fine the most important part is of course the cord which you do not want to submerge or get wet that's just the way panels are now that we talk about the solar panel let's talk about the solar input again 120 watts that is a 120 watt panel with a 20 percent 23% efficiency rate. So chances are you're going to get at least 70, at least 80, maybe even 90 watts coming in if you've got a great day and a great angle. Now, with a unit of this size, you're basically only going to get that one panel. It does have the solar input charging 12 to 24 volts at 120 max. This panel puts out 17 volts which is right in between that 12 and 24 and it puts out 120 watts at perfect capacity but you're at 17 already you're not going to find a panel that gets 5 volts it's just not going to work so that one panel is basically all you're going to be able to use for this it's not a bad thing it's just something you should know when you start talking about the bigger models you can start combining panels this one 120 is basically the max you can get in my opinion, again, without any testing being done, this is what I would consider a, a weekender unit, a tailgater unit. You can take this thing in the back of your truck, in the back of your car, with the solar panel and your TV and go tailgating at the NASCAR race or at the Clemson football game or whatever team you root for, right? And you can set this up in the bed of your truck and watch all the sporting event, especially if it's a lunchtime noon game right you've got the solar panel out making 120 watts you've got a tv sitting back there you're only pulling in 50 watts 55 watts so you're doing that pass through charging basically to run the tv let's say a cloud comes over you've still got 500 watts if you're only pulling 50 watts from that tv well you can run this thing for six hours of a game in theory as long as it performs good that is what i'm going to say this thing is for three day power outage no problem powering devices that are not primary okay CPAP great you can probably run a CPAP for a couple hours it says so in the book um, cell phones you can do like a 90 charges on an iPhone drones why you need a drone during a power outage I don't know but you can do it if it can run a fridge if it can run a freezer then I will truly 100% recommend it it takes a lot to run a fridge it takes a lot to run a freezer but if it can, then remember, your freezer only has to be plugged up once every 24 hours, in most cases. So, yes, it might drain most of this battery, but if you can plug the freezer up and then go solar charge it for 8 hours all day, then it's going to reduce itself. Then you can plug your cell phones up and everything else up to it and fill those up. But again, this is all before testing. What do I like about it? I like the carry handle. I like the flat design. You're not supposed to stack anything on top. That's their safety regulation, right? I understand it. I do like it being flat. You could, if you wanted to, not recommend it, put things on top of it. The light is on the back, which to me makes sense because I'm going to have my devices charging from the front. Even if I have a cell phone plugged in, it's probably going to be sitting on top. I'm going to use this light, I'm going to set it up somewhere, back of a couch, on a table somewhere, and have that shining so I don't necessarily have to be trying to stare at the light as I'm trying to press the buttons on the front. To each their own, right? Some people are going to like it, some people aren't going to like it. I do like that it's an area light. It does have three outlets on the front. So yes, let's say you plug something up, the TV up to it, and then you've got still got two outlets. And these are the three prong outlets versus the two prong outlets so you can plug that more important stuff up right the tvs and the the cookers and whatever else you can plug them up to it it having three charging options is interesting to me three charging modes i will say um being able to 
do slow when you want it slow and then be fast when you want it fast. I like that. One of my newer power stations has a little flip switch and you've only got normal and fast. You don't have a slow option. Why would you want it slow? Well, if this thing was just trickle charging and you left it in the closet plugged up, that's where you would want that slow charge. Again, like most things, it's made of plastic. Um, can it take a drop? Probably. Can it take a sledgehammer? No. But that's not what these are for, right? These are for making sure you keep the lights on, making sure you can run a TV, making sure you can run a CPAP, right? You give this to grandma so she can run her CPAP, she's probably not going to be going to play freaking sledgehammer with it. It is plastic, but that also keeps the weight down. Again, what, 15, 14 pounds? Pretty decent unit, right? So we're going to do some testing with it. Again, I'm going to see what it can run and how long it can run and how fast it takes to charge and how fast it takes to charge on solar. Um, that's going to be one big video. That's going to be next week. This, thus far, and again, we've not done any testing, doesn't seem to be like a bad unit. Again, you're getting 120 watt uh, solar panel with it. That's pretty good. I'll go through more of the functions next week when I talk about the charging and I talk about the running things. Um, but thus far, you know, if you're looking for something not to power your entire house, but just to run your CPAP when the power goes out, just to keep your cell phones and your flashlights and your TV going, this ain't bad. All right, it is pure sine wave, which means that it's safe to use on your important electronics, such as your TV, such as your um, iPad, iPod, these things that you're spending thousands of dollars on. It is safe to use with them. It doesn't have that jumpy power like a gas generator does, and it's it's quiet, right? Gas generator, not quiet at all. These portable power stations are super quiet. That's all I got for today's video. Again, we do have a discount code at TTPC number six without the number, without the pound sign, just the just the number six. So if you do want to save six percent, again, me personally, I'd wait for a sale. But that is an honest overview. And then next week we'll be getting into the nitty gritty and seeing what it can do. That's all I got for today's video. Y'all stay safe out there.